video to our last video on uh, which we factored trinomials where our a value is one. Uh, in this video we're going to take a look at a special type of trinomial called a perfect square trinomial. Um, and simply put, a perfect square trinomial, just like we call like 25 is a square because it is a, a square of five with itself. Um, a trinomial that results from a product from a, a, or excuse me, the results from a product of a binomial with itself, that would be what we consider to be a perfect square trinomial. So what I want you to <coughs> look at with me going forward is just kind of looking at what would this look like if we squared a binomial. So a plus b squared, and that really is kind of this thing right here. I want you to consider that we'd really be taking a plus b times a plus b and kind of seeing what kind of patterns emerge from this. But if we do this and we FOIL, we would get uh, the first value, a squared here. So a squared plus a b. So plus AB plus BA, or I'm going to write that as AB. And then our last two here, we get plus B squared. And so our final form tends to look like this A squared plus two of these ABs plus a B squared here. Uh, but this would be considered to be a, a perfect square trinomial. And so same thing down here. What if we had A minus B in a product with itself? Well, that'd be a square of A minus B and produce a perfect square trinomial. The only difference this time is we get A squared minus AB minus AB and then plus b squared on the last product here. So we end up with a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, but this is our other perfect square trinomial where we're squaring a binomial that's a difference. So uh, basically the patterns we want to see here are when we spot trinomials that are of these forms here, we're going to kind of generalize this right here. But if we ever see a trinomial that's of the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, it is a perfect square trinomial, and not only that, we could write this as just a plus b times itself here, where a is what I could square to get this first value, and b is what I could square to get this second value here. Now, the way to kind of look at this is this is kind of like a difference of two squares in that the way these stick out is that your first and your last terms are always, always squares of each other, uh, or not of each other, but are squares. And so kind of like differences of squares stick out, these tend to stick out here because your outer terms will be, uh, they'll be perfect squares, okay? Now your middle term is always twice the product of A with B. So if these two numbers, you multiply them together and double that, that should produce our middle term here, okay? So what if we have A squared minus 2AB plus B squared? One thing I want you to notice is the outer terms are squares, and so this has got my radar going here. And I think that this could be a, a perfect square trinomial where we'll put a in the front and b in the back because those are the values we could square respectively to get a squared and b squared. And then we'll put a minus right here, okay? So these two patterns are what we're going to kind of utilize or what I want you to utilize. And the neat thing about it is if you look up at letter a with me here, this is a trinomial. As a matter of fact, it's of the form 1x squared plus bx plus c, so what we just got done looking at in the previous video. And so we can factor this like we traditionally would, saying things like, hey, you know, what multiplies out to be a positive 49 that adds up to be 14? And, you know, it kind of occurs to me that 7 and 7 both work here. So if you want to factor this, it's just, you know, I know I have a couple of binomial factors and it would have to be 7 and 7. Uh, then you go right ahead and do that because that works just fine. Uh, one thing I want you to notice, though, is that would be the same thing as x plus 7 squared, okay? So this is our pattern right here, our first pattern, uh, kind of sticking out now. We get a perfect square trinomial, and the way we can kind of recognize this is it's a trinomial, but look at your outer terms here. x squared is a perfect square, and 49 is a perfect square. So that's what got me kind of suspicious in the first place. And when you look at x and 7 here, if you multiply these together, you get 7x. By doubling that, 2 times the product of a and b, or x and 7 here. You get two, two 7x's, which produces a 14x in the middle here. So I can see this as a perfect square trinomial. So just like on letter b here, switching up, uh, this should be a y in the middle here, not an x. Uh, but y squared minus 20y plus 100, hey, you know, trinomial, uh, the a value is 1, so I can go ahead and factor to this traditionally. But if I recognize, hey, y squared is a perfect square, 100 is a perfect square, maybe this is a perfect square trinomial, let's see if this would work here. Uh, what would I square to get y? I would like square, uh, sorry, to get y squared, I'd square y. What could I square to get 100? We would square a 10. And so what do I put in the middle here? Well, this is going to end up being a minus in this case because of this sign right here. And notice that when it's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, we have a difference here. This is because if we foil this out here, we're going to get twice of y times negative 10. And y times negative 10 is course negative 10y and if you double that you get negative 20y and so that's got to add up to be a negative this time sometimes this is a negative um, this very last one here 
This one, I want you to notice, doesn't have an A value, and I don't mean this A here, but a leading coefficient of one. So in this case, even if you wanted to, you couldn't get it to work by saying, what are numbers that multiply out to be a 64 and add up to be 80? Because you're not gonna find any that actually do that. So what we have to do here is look at this as, well, hey, it's a trinomial, and I notice that the outer terms are squares, so now I'm suspicious that this might be a perfect square trinomial. So in other words, what, could I, what binomial could I square to get this? And we just kind of answer this by saying, what could I square to get a 25a squared? We would put a 5a in front, okay? And what could I square to get 64? I could put an 8 in the back here, or I could you know, write this 5a and this 8 here. And because I need these to add up to be a positive in the middle, I'm gonna make these both plus. So 5a plus 8 times itself should give us this. And just to check it, what do I get when I multiply 5a times 8? I get 40a and double that, you get 80a, these would be our factors here. So these are what we refer to as perfect square trinomials. They tend to pop up, and the, and the big thing you want to see is that you notice that these outer terms are always squares, and so that's kind of a big red flag that these might be perfect square trinomials. So be on the lookout for these. Cheers.